Luke chapter 2, verse 21 to 40. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought the, the child, Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marvelled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their town, their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. Hello. So, for the next four days, um, right up until Christmas Eve, we're continuing our Advent devotion series. And the scriptures that I'm going to be looking at are in Luke chapter 2 and uh, John chapter 1. The title for my first devotion this morning is Child of Destiny particularly looking at Luke chapter 2, verse 21 and onwards. Verse 21 says, On the eighth day when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. All great people that have ever impacted the world have often been appreciated in retrospect, or I would say always been appreciated in retrospect. Their track record speaks for them. People are honoured for what they do in their life, what they achieve. That's the basis on which we appreciate and we understand people's contribution to the world. It's a life well lived that gains recognition, if not in the lifetime of the person, then when their exploits are recorded by history. It's often done looking backwards. No one seems to make history just by being born. Even those born into royal position, into royal families, are, are an unknown quantity until we observe the kind of person that they grow up to be. Babies begin their life on a level playing field and are then shaped by their upbringing, their experiences, their education, their opportunities, their talents. However, there was something about the birth of this baby that tells us that his destiny was all wrapped up before his life even began. He was named Jesus, the name the angel gave him before he was conceived. There was, there was a whole package that was coming with Jesus that was already set, that was already planned, that was already, he already was all that he was going to become. He'd been the subject of angelic visitations and declarations before he was conceived. He was a story that was already being told. His ordained status as the saviour of mankind was established before he had even taken a breath. His name was given by the angel before any of this happened. His conception and birth simply gave expression to all that he already was before his earthly life began. 
he could not and would not fail because he was a child of destiny. John 1 tells us that in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. The nativity, the birth of Jesus Christ was a download of the Godhead into human flesh. It was planned, purposed and it was unstoppable. It was understood in heaven and is now slowly being revealed on earth. It's like what could be clearly seen in heaven was now beginning to be being seen on the earth from before he could walk or talk all that he would become all that he would achieve was set he was a child of destiny there seems to be two parallel worlds governing the life of this baby he was born totally and completely human part of society the child of his parents a member of the family Luke 2.22 tells us that when the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. They were handling him in the only way they knew, obedient to the traditions of the world and the faith they were so integrally a part of. But at the same time, Behind the curtain, as it were, there was a whole other perspective. The Spirit of God was at work watching over him, speaking about him, preparing the ground for all that he would become, almost in an unseen way, as his parents brought him up, as only they knew how. So the Holy Spirit was also working to prepare the way for all that he would become. Verse 25 of Luke chapter 2 tells us this. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised... You may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people Israel. He saw all of that in this baby because the Holy Spirit was on him. And as they brought him into the temple, so the Holy Spirit spoke to him, Simeon, this is what you've been waiting for. This is what I've prepared. This is what it's all about. And he could... He could speak and he could prophesy and he could declare things that had not yet been accomplished. He could declare them as accomplished because the Holy Spirit showed him just who this baby was, this child of destiny. So what does it all mean for us? To me, it speaks of the certainty and the security of God's purposes. Nothing is left to chance. The world is probably as turbulent as it has ever been in my lifetime. We can feel exposed. We can feel insecure. We can feel uncertain. Our faith can be shaken. How will things work out? Every day brings more questions. Does God see? Does God hear? Does God care? Christmas is a reminder that not only does God see, hear and care, but he acts as well. He plans for our well-being. Our salvation is certain because at a certain time he pulled back the veil of heaven and entered into our world. He didn't look for a likely servant, a talented and capable individual to carry his purposes. He himself was born into the world, taking on the human frame, not with a mission that hoped for the best, but with one whose outcome was assured before it began. And so the message this Christmas... God has still got this. Nothing that happens to you, me or the world has any bearing on what he has already set in place. Good news of great joy to all the earth. A saviour is born. Not one that has qualified himself, 
but one that was already qualified from before the beginning of time. We can rest easy this Christmas because our eyes have seen the salvation which God has prepared in the sight of all nations. The birth of Jesus, a child of destiny, one whose, whose, whose accomplishments were set and certain before he even came into being. He has achieved all that he was designed, all that he was set to achieve. We thank God for Jesus this Christmas and the certainty and the security that he brings. God bless you. Heavenly Father, thank you for the beautiful psalm of praise that fell from the lips of old Simeon when he saw the baby Jesus and took him in his arms and he praised you for your goodness, grace and your faithfulness. Thank you for sending Jesus to be the Messiah of Israel and the saviour of the whole world. We pray that we may develop a similar faith to Simeon who lived by faith, trusted your word and waited expectantly for you to fulfil all that you promised. Thank you that your word is altogether true and stands fast forever and ever and thank you for your promises to me and to us that one day we will see Jesus and be made like him for your greater glory. We praise your name.